I want to call to your attention in getting ready for our reading of the Passion today and the telling of the story again, some symbols. I want to give you these symbols up front, get them in your mind so that as we read through the story, and by the way, that's pretty much what the proclamation is today, is the story of the Passion. So here, just let these images come into your mind and then we'll tell the story again. Images like bread and wine around a table, a basin with water and a towel, a purse, a cup, praying hands, the sound of a kiss. fire, a crown of thorns, a cord of rope, clenched hands, a cross, nails, a cloth tearing, white cloths for burial. So now hear this reading. When the hour came, he took his place at the table and the apostles with him and he said to them, I have eagerly desired to eat this Passover meal with you before I suffer for I tell you I will not eat it again until it is fulfilled in the kingdom of heaven then he took a cup and after giving thanks he said take this and divide it among yourselves for I tell you that from now on I will not drink it until the kingdom of God comes and he took a loaf of bread and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to them, saying, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. He did the same with the cup after supper. And he said, This cup that is poured out for you is the new covenant in my blood. But see, the one who betrays me is with me. And his hand is on the table, for the Son of Man is going as it has been determined. But woe to that one by whom he is betrayed. And they began to ask one another which one of them this could be, who would do this. And then a dispute also arose among them as to which one of them was to be regarded as the greatest. And he said to them, The kings of the Gentiles lord it over them, and those in authority over them are called their benefactors. But not so shall it be with you. Rather, the greatest among you shall be like the youngest. And the leader must become like one who serves. For who is greater, the one who is at table or the one who serves? Is it not the one at table? But I am among you as one who serves. You are those who have stood by me in my trials, and I confer on you just as my Father has conferred on me a kingdom, so that you may eat and drink at my table in my kingdom, and you will sit on thrones judging the twelve tribes of Israel. Simon, Simon, listen. Satan has demanded to sift all of you like wheat, but I, I have prayed for you that your own faith may not fail, and you, once you have turned back, strengthen your brothers. And he said to him, Lord, I'm ready to go with you to prison, and even until death. And Jesus said, I tell you, Peter, the cock will not crow this day until you have denied three times, even knowing me. And he said to them, When I sent you out without a purse, a bag, or sandals, did you lack anything? And they said, No, nothing. And he said to them, But now the one who has a purse must take it, and likewise take a bag with you. And the one who has no sword must sell his cloak and buy one. For I tell you, this scripture must be fulfilled in me. 
and he was counted among the lawless. And indeed, what is written about me is being fulfilled. They said, Lord, look, here are two swords. He replied, it is enough. He came out and went, as was his custom, to the Mount of Olives, and the disciples followed him. When he reached the place, he said to them, Pray that you may not come to the time of trial. And then he withdrew from them about a stone's throw, knelt down, and prayed. He prayed, Father, if you are willing, remove this cup from me. Yet not what I will, but what you will be done. And an angel appeared to him and gave him strength. In his anguish he prayed the more earnestly and his sweat became like great drops of blood. When he got up from prayer, he came to the disciples and found them sleeping because of grief. And he said to them, Why are you sleeping? Get up and pray that you may not come to the time of trial. And while he was speaking, suddenly a crowd came, and the one called Judas, one of the twelve, was leading them. And he approached Jesus to kiss him. But Jesus said to him, Judas, is it by a kiss that you are betraying me? And when those who were around him saw what was coming, they asked, Lord, should we strike with the sword? And then one of them struck the, the slave's ear, the high priest and cut off his right ear. But Jesus said, No more of this. And he touched his ear and healed him. Then Jesus said to the chief priests, the officers of the temple police, and the elders who had come for him, Have you come out with swords and clubs, as if I were a bandit? When I was with you day after day in the temple, you did not lay hands on me, but this is your hour, and the power of your darkness. And they seized him and led him away, bringing him to the high priest's house. But Peter was following at a distance, and when they had kindled a fire in the middle of the courtyard and sat down together, Peter sat among them. And then a servant girl, seeing him in the firelight, stared, stared at him and said, This man was with him. But Peter denied it, saying, Woman, I don't know him. A little later, someone else on seeing Peter said, You're also one of them. And Peter said, I am not. And then about an hour later, yet another kept insisting, Surely you are also with him, for you're a Galilean. And Peter said, I do not know what you're talking about. And at that moment, while he was still speaking, the cock crowed. And the Lord turned and looked at Peter, and Peter remembered the word, Jesus, how he had said to him, Before the cock crows today, you will deny me three times. And Peter went out and wept bitterly. Now the men who were holding Jesus began to mock him and beat him. They also blindfolded him and kept asking him, Prophesy, who is it that struck you? And they heaped many other insults on him. When the day came, or when day came, the assembly of the elders of the people, both chief priests and scribes, gathered together, and they brought him to their council, and they said, If you are the Messiah, tell us. And he said, If I tell you, you will not believe me. And if I question you, you will not answer. But from now on, the Son of Man will be seated at the right hand of the power of God. And all of them asked, Are you then the Son of God? And he said to them, You say that I am. And they said, What further testimony do we need? We have heard it ourselves from his own lips. And the assembly rose as a body and brought Jesus before Pilate. And they began to accuse him, saying, We found this man perverting our nation, forbidding us to pay taxes to the emperor, and saying that he himself is the Messiah, a king. And Pilate asked him, Are you king of the Jews then? And he answered, You say so. And Pilate said to the chief priests and the crowds, I find no basis for an accusation against this man. But they were insistent. 
He stirs up the people by teaching throughout all Judea, from Galilee, where he, even to this place. And when Pilate heard this, he asked whether the man was a Galilean. And he, when he learned that he was under Herod's jurisdiction, he sent him off to Herod, who was himself in Jerusalem at the time. And when Herod saw Jesus, he was very pleased. Because he had been wanting to see him for a long time. Because he had heard about him and was hoping to see him perform some sign. He questioned him at some length, but Jesus gave no answer. The chief priests and the scribes stood by, vehemently accusing him. Even Herod with his soldiers treated him with contempt and mocked him, then put an elegant robe on him and sent him back to Pilate. That same day, Herod and Pilate became friends with each other. Before this, they had been enemies. Pilate then called together the chief priests, the leaders, the people, and said to them, You brought me this man as one who was perverting the people, and here I have examined him in your presence and have not found this man guilty of any of your charges against him. Neither has Herod, for he sent him back to us. Indeed, he's done nothing to deserve death. I will therefore have him flogged and release him. And then they all shouted out together, Away with this man! Release Barabbas for us, who was a man who had been put in prison for an insurrection that had taken place in the city and for murder. Pilate, wanting to release Jesus, addressed them again, but they kept shouting, Crucify him! Crucify him! A third time he said to them, Why? What evil has he done? I have found in him no ground for the sentence of death. I will therefore have him flogged and release him. But they urged demanding with loud shouts that he should be crucified. And their voices prevailed. So Pilate gave his verdict that their demand should be granted. And he released the man they asked for, the one who had been put in prison for insurrection and murder, and he handed Jesus over as they wished. As they led him away, they seized a man, Simon of Cyrene, who was coming from the country and they laid the cross on him and made him carry it behind Jesus. A great number of the people followed him, and among them were women who were beating their breasts and wailing for him. But Jesus turned to them and said, Daughters of Jerusalem, do not weep for me. Weep for yourselves and for your children. For the days are surely coming when they will say, Blessed are the barren and the wombs that have never bore and the breasts that have never nursed. Then they will say to the mountains, fall on us, and to the hills, cover us. For if they do this when the wood is green in the springtime, what will happen when it is dry and winter? Two others also, who were criminals, were led away to be put to death with him. When they came to the place that is called Golgotha, or the skull, they crucified Jesus there with the criminals, one on his right and one on his left. And Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they are doing. And they cast lots to divide among themselves for his clothing. And the people stood by, watching. And the leaders, they scoffed at him. He saved others, they said. Let him save himself. If he's the Messiah of God, the chosen one, the soldiers, they also mocked him coming up and offering him sour wine and saying, if you are the king of the Jews, save yourself. There was also an inscription over him. This is the king of the Jews. One of the criminals who were hanged there kept deriding him and saying, are you not the Messiah? Save yourself and us. But the other rebuked him. Do you not fear God since you're under the same sentence of condemnation? And we indeed have been condemned justly for we're getting what we deserve for our deeds but this man has done nothing wrong. And he said to Jesus, Remember me, Jesus, when you come into your kingdom. And Jesus said, Truly I tell you today, you will be with me in paradise. It was now about noon. And darkness came over the whole land there until three in the afternoon. The sun's light failed. The curtain of the temple was torn in two. 
Then Jesus, crying with a loud voice, said, Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. And having said this, he breathed his last. When the centurion saw what had taken place, he praised God and said, Certainly this man was innocent. And when all the crowds who had gathered for this spectacle saw what had taken place, they returned home, beating their breasts. But all his acquaintances, including the women who had followed him from Galilee, stood at a distance watching these things. Now there was a good and righteous man named Joseph who, though a member of the council, had not agreed to their plan and action. He came from the Jewish town of Arimathea, and he was waiting expectantly for the kingdom of God. And he went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus, and he took it down from the cross, wrapped it in a linen cloth, and laid it in a tomb, a rock-hewn tomb, where no one had been laid. It was the day of preparation, and the Sabbath was just beginning. The women who had come with him from Galilee followed, and they saw the tomb and how his body was laid. Then they returned and prepared spices and ointment. On the Sabbath, they rested according to the commandment. Today we began with the Palm Sunday readings. The disciples get into this procession. They think he's finally going to say that he's king of the world and take over like they hoped he would. Quickly we turn to the Passion story after Michael's moving meditation into the Passion story. The story of our Lord's suffering for what he believed and was called to do on earth. And the disciples' hopes are dashed almost as soon as they began. There really, really isn't too much I can or even want to add to this story. So I'll tell you one quick story. A man goes to a spiritual teacher and says to the teacher, Teacher, I'm in a hard place. My faith is failing. I can't endure this difficulty. And the teacher says, Tell me, what is this difficulty like? And the man says, it's like being in darkness. And the teacher says, this darkness, is it more like a tunnel or like a cave? And the man says, oh, it's a cave and I'm deep into it and there's no light to be found. Oh, I wish I could find the door of the cave and get out. The place is unbearable. And the teacher says, have you noticed anything in the cave? No, says the man. I'm paralyzed in it. And the teacher says, Do not leave the cave too quickly, my son, for if you do, you may miss valuable insight, maybe even hidden treasure inside. Well, with this the man was not pleased, for the darkness was great, but he trusted the teacher and went away. Jesus was laid not in a cave with an opening, but a tomb. If we leave this place, this story, too quickly, we'll miss the pain, his pain, his suffering, his death. And if we miss his pain, his suffering, and his death, We'll also overlook the world's pain, the world's suffering, the world's death. Because it's the same. So on this day of Christ's passion, let us not jump too quickly to Easter. Let us this week, this holy week, remember both Jesus' suffering and the suffering of our world. Amen.